okie doke. So take two. We are <laughs> yes, take two. We're delighted to have you here today, and we're delighted to have Larry um, talking about dragonflies and damselflies, which is one in a series of online programs that we have. Which I'm going to just put up the list here. Um, because next up we have Come in This Land Is Your Land, which is explores why African American and other people of color are reluctant to consider the great outdoors as their own. Judy Gallagher is going to do one on moths. And then coming up um, in October, in mid-October, oh wait, November, early November, Larry's going to be back and talk about birding the four corners of the United States. So... so yeah, I was going to say, since we had a bit of a, a, a snafu for the Northern Virginia Bird Club, think of this as sort of a makeup for people that may not have been able to see that, and also for all the new people who want to see it. So, Yes, absolutely. All good. And we are offering all our programs right now at no charge, but would appreciate your contribution to help keep this series going. Um, $5 <laughs> is a great help, and you can see on our webpage, pwconserve.org. Just click join us and you can donate safely online or um, get the mail-in address. We, as I said before, we're delighted to have Larry with us. He is the president of the Northern Virginia Bird Club. He's a writer, a photographer. Um, he leads lots of outdoor nature trips, especially relating to birds. Um, he does videos and he has narrated a dance program. So we are totally honored. <laughs> Great. As, and um, it's really nice to have Larry around. He's a, a fantastic wildlife person. He always leads a sector for the Noakesville Christmas bird count and for the Manassas um, butterfly count. So we really appreciate all that Larry does and he makes a big difference in the region. I'm so glad you're here tonight, Larry. And I'm going to turn the program over to you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and thank you, Hope Kim. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. That one looks like a good one. Okay, slideshow. There we go. Can everybody see a dragonfly? Yes. Yes, awesome sauce. Yes. All right, so um, I'm going to talk about dragons and damsels, which are dragonflies and damselflies. What you're looking at there is a Halloween pennant. Talk about that a little more later. That's one of my favorites. Uh, Halloween because they're orange and black. And it's a pennant because they like to sit on top of things like a little flag, as you can see there. So I'll basically I'll talk about the life cycle and little facts about dragonflies. And I'll just show you a bunch of photos I've taken of uh, <coughs> dragonflies and damselflies in the area. All right. Awesome. All right, here we go. So, as you can read there, there are 360 dragonfly and 131 damselfly species in North America. And collectively, they're called odonates. So if you ever heard anyone say the term odonates, that's what they're talking about. So there's dragonfly on the left, which is a needham skimmer, and a damselfly on the right, which is a uh, variable dancer. Um, I've seen... Of those dragonflies, about I think about 70 of them nationwide. So it's a lot more I haven't seen. So uh, let's go here. Okay. So dragonflies have an interesting life cycle. They don't, they're, uh, their metamorphosis, it's not like a butterfly, which is caterpillar and then like a chrysalis and then adult. It's, it's more of a, the nymph is actually the longest living uh, stage the nymphs can live for up to a year in the and they're in the water and they're voracious predators in the water they'll hunt all sorts of things little mites or whatever and then when they come out they'll come out and you can see um the dragonfly this is not my picture by the way the dragonfly on the right you can see has come out of that skin there see it's shaped like a nymph so he's come out of that skin and he's drying off and uh, then he'll start flying around and, and live for about a month. So uh, you can see they go through, uh, the nymph will grow. They'll go through these stages and then they become an adult. But most of their life, they're underwater as, as a larva or a nymph. OK. 
Okay, here's some interesting fun facts about dragonflies. They can't walk. They can only perch or fly. That's about it. Uh, they're, they're predators. That's all they are. They're, they don't need anything, anything vegetable. Total, total predators. Keto diet, right? Whatever. They can, and they'll eat other they'll damselflies. They'll eat each other. Anything they can catch. A butterfly, whatever. Um, they've been around 300 million years, and there were ancient dragonflies, two and a half feet wingspan. Can you imagine that? That is a big dragonfly. <laughs> that is a beast. Uh, I don't think I'd want that thing in my face. But, uh, yeah. So, here, as I said, they'll eat anything. Here's an eastern pondock eating a big bluet. So you could say this is a damsel in distress, right? Getting eaten by that dragonfly. That's not having a good day. But uh, I, I actually, this was at Occoquan Bay, and uh, I seen these pond hawks eating da uh, the big bluets a lot. Seems like it's a regular part of their diet. So here's uh, something uh, talking about the. Uh, life cycle of the dragonflies. These are green darners and they're in a tandem linkage. Basically, this is the first part of the mating uh, that they do. I think I took this photo in Texas, but you can see that the male is the colorful one with the blue and green and it's grabbed the female by the neck. He's basically got a uh, pincers on his butt, which he grabs her by the neck with. So. <laughs> What a way to be, and he's the aggressor. So, uh, but females, uh, when they come to the water like that, that, they know that's likely to happen to them. They come to mate when they come to the water. They know they're probably going to get jumped by a male. Uh, that's why often when you see dragonflies out in meadows away from water, a lot of them are females because they're staying away from the uh, from the water because they're not ready to get jumped by the males yet. So once the male has the female, they'll uh, start the mating. These are great blue skimmers. And you can see they make, I call that a heart. It's a little more romantic, right? It's a circle. So uh, she, she still got her grabbed, right, right there. Still got her, still got her by the neck grabbed, but uh, they're, now they're mating. And once, uh, once they're done mating, she'll immediately start laying eggs. Sometimes uh, the male just leaves, but other, other species, he'll patrol. He'll, he'll fly around and he'll uh, chase off other males that are trying to jump her to, so she can lay her eggs in peace. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a kind of a brutal life these guys have. So this is a tenoral dragonfly. This one happens to be a black-shouldered spiny legs. And I'll talk about them later. But a tenoral is one who is just hatched. Remember the photo I showed you of the life cycle? A dragonfly that has just come out of a, has just turned into an adult, uh, often in the early morning. Uh, they'll just have to, they'll sit there and dry, their wings have to dry off. And they got to get blood pumped into their wings too. So you can see how wet the wings look. They'll, they'll dry out and he'll get blood in his body and his wings and warm up, uh, dragonflies are solar powered, so they have to be warm enough to be able to fly around. So uh, that's, yeah, so he'll, and when they're this age, they look very different. Sometimes hard to ID them, because a 10 year old dragonfly is just so, I mean, it's just looks like a generic dragonfly, doesn't it? Very little color, but that'll come later. Okay, I'll start talking about the dragonflies we've, we have around here. This is the common green darner. This one happens to be a female. You saw the one I showed you before, the male one is blue. These are, these darners, I'm, I'm gonna show you the different darners I have photos of. Darners are the biggest ones we have, for the most part, the biggest dragonflies we have. And uh, I think they might be called darners because they look almost like a darning needle down here, right? The, they're so long and pointy. Um, Green darners are interesting because they migrate. Uh, dragonflies migrate. Some of them migrate. Green darners and the saddlebags, black and red, uh, 
Carolina saddlebags migrate. But uh, I think uh, I heard, I was talking to Bert Harris at Clifton Institute the other day, and he said that it looks like the green darners will go into the panhandle of Florida and they'll live, they'll go through a life cycle down there and then they'll fly back up here in the spring. So uh, you can sometimes see these early, like in March. So sometimes they're the first dragonfly you'll see of the year. And those have not hatched out here. They've migrated from the south. That's why you can see them so early sometimes. But uh, they're beautiful. And it's hard to find one perch. So I got lucky on this one. They seem to always be in motion. Okay. Here's another one. This is another one. There's a lot of these at Huntley Meadows. This is a swamp darner. Another big one. Uh, you can see that really pretty uh, stripes here. It's a beautiful dragonfly. And if you and they're dark. Usually this in this light it doesn't look as dark as they are, but they actually look pretty dark. So if you're at Huntley Meadows or somewhere and you see a big dark dragonfly fly over your head, it, it might be a swamp darner. So it looks all black and dark. And they're uh, they're pretty vicious. I saw um, once I saw two. Uh, I don't know if they were trying to eat each other or fight each other, but they were fighting and fighting, buzzing, and, oh, just causing a racket. So, uh, so all right. Larry, wait, go back yep. one. You have a question. Oh, what's the question? I didn't see. Um, yes, go ahead. Are the darners like monarchs in that the ones that come up in March are not the ones that migrated south? That's right. They go through a life cycle down in, in Florida, and then the new, yeah, the new ones come up, right. They're different, different dragonflies. Yes. But it's not um, right. Yep. So, uh, yeah, you'll see them in the early spring sometimes. All right, here's um, – now, a lot of our dragonflies are gone by now, but there's still some fall dragonflies, like this guy. This is a shadow darner. I found this one at Green Springs Gardens. Uh, this one actually – I photographed this on November 11th. It's hard to believe that he, these are uh, especially acclimated to colder weather. So I was really surprised to see a big old dragonfly in November, but uh, there it was. And they're around right now too. So yeah, that's a fall specialty. And again, you see the big body, the long abdomen there. So uh, Kim wanted to see my shadow darner. There it is. <laughs> Here's another one. This one I took at Merrimack Farm. This is a springtime darner. Um, I'm wondering if this thing he's on is, I guess that's a leaf. I don't know. It might be his, uh, I don't know. But anyway, this is another big one. I didn't know what it was when I photographed it, figured it out later. But uh, this one was at the Bluebell Festival. So they're, they're around early. Springtime darner. Yep. Another pretty, they're, they're, the darners are just really pretty, I think. All right, now I'll start the club tails. Club tails are really beautiful. Club tails like to, oh, I should, uh, oh, that's okay. Um, club tails like to sit on the ground a lot. So most of my club tail photos are on the, on the ground. And then it's easier to photograph them there too. But uh, So this is a russet tip club tail. You can see. The club tail called club tails, obviously they have the big club on the tail here. And this one is russet tipped. So uh, uh, some of these names are pretty easy, you know, didn't seem like it took them a lot of time to name it. Said, oh, what is, oh, it's a club tail. Oh, it's got russet tip. <laughs> so that's one of my favorites. This has got the coolest name, the Cobra club tail. <laughs> so this one has a huge club. And then it's got the cobra. I guess cobra, I don't know why. <laughs> I guess they think it's patterned sort of like a cobra. I'm not sure. But uh, that one's really cool. Cobra club tail. I don't see those a lot. They're going to be more down by the river, like uh, River Bend or Great Falls. You might see one. Or maybe Occoquan Bay, I think you might see them too. Here's an ashy club tail. This one I saw in uh, Western Loudoun County Blue Ridge Center. 
It's almost like a parfait look here on the, or a green, the kind of green, ashy club tail. Unicorn club tail. These, um, you can tell a unicorn club tail by this yellow here. The club isn't quite as huge as like on the cobra club tail, but if you see this yellow here, that's a good clue. It's a unicorn club tail. Several of these I saw on uh, Jim Wagner surveys that when I, when I did them this year and uh, they were, uh, they were uh, quite a few at Aquan Bay. So that's where I photographed this one. Very cool. How did they get its name? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't see a horn on the front. Of I don't know. That's a good question. I'd have to look into that. But uh, that's what they call it. But I said, look for the yellow here. That's a good one. Yeah, the one thing I like about dragonflies, they do have cool names, like the cobra club tail, the unicorn club tail. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> Lancet club tail. This is a pretty one. This is a smaller one, and he does have a smaller club. But uh, this is a miniature version of one I'll show you in a bit. So, this actually might be the only time I saw a Lancet club tail. Fortunately, I was able to get a decent photo. I think that one might have been out in Western Loudon, too. All right, Eastern Ringtail. This is a very pretty one. Uh, these we see occasionally. Uh, I think this one might have been at Riverbend or maybe Algonquian. So uh, that, that's, that's another club tail. Who knew there were so many drinks? You can see the rings on the tail. We know how this one got its name, right? All these rings. That one's pretty logical. I'll have to look into why it's called the Unicorn, unicorn Club Tail. Maybe we don't know. And you have a question um, of somebody who's wondering what the club is used for. Uh, maybe, um, not sure. It could be to attract mates, possibly. Or uh, I don't know if they would use it to fight off other dragonflies. Maybe smack one. I'm <laughs> not sure. I think, I think it's more of a... Uh, I think it's more ornamental to, to attract the females, I would think. Yeah. Because if it really had, there'd be more of them with it, I think, if it was really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's a common sand dragon. This one has a small club. Yeah, some of them barely have a club. This is the only time I've seen this one. This was in a park near Huntley Meadow. Somebody, I got a tip that were sand dragons there. There it was. Just in a little... Uh, <laughs> just 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 in a neighborhood there was a little little park uh little creek there and uh they're usually on sand so they're well named sand dragon you can see is on sand there so uh let's see here's the black shouldered spiny legs another club tail this one's pretty common this one i see pretty often this is one of the more common club tails you'll see uh He's got the black shoulders, right? There you go. And he's got spiny legs. You can see the spiny legs there. So that's why they named it that, I guess. And he's got a pretty substantial club there. Uh, a lot of these, um, I, last, I saw one at Manassas Battlefield. I um, see a lot of them at Bless Park in Ashburn area. They're, they're pretty common. I think they see them at Algon uh, Aquan Bay too. Here is the famous dragon hunter. This, now this, this is considered a club tail, but it doesn't have that much of a club. But this thing is huge. This is one of the bigger dragonflies. It's as big as the darners, but it's thicker. It's, it's, it's a very stocky beast. Um, I think this is the one from the Antioch property that Kim and I were surveying once. This is, remember, remember I pointed out the dragon hunter? I do. We were all very excited. Yeah, it was cool. I think this is him. So uh, these things will eat anything they can catch as shown in the next photo. <laughs> this was a long distance photo, but this is a dragon hunter with a spice bush swallowtail. Not the greatest photo, but you get the idea. <laughs> I saw this thing flying around from a distance and it made the weirdest profile. 
I couldn't tell what it was. So I got binoculars on it. And then I said, that's a dragonfly carrying a butterfly. Oh my gosh. A big butterfly too. Spicefish swallowtails are big. So this guy, you can see he's got it by the neck there. <laughs> so, oh, that was an amazing sight. Wish I'd got a look. But I said, that's a long distance photo with the older camera. <laughs> wow. Oh, here's another one. This is also from the Antioch property, the gray paddle tail. This one is interesting. Uh, it's not like, doesn't act like other dragonflies. It's almost always perched on tr a tree trunk like that. You usually find them in the woods and they are their own genus. Like there's, there, there's no other dragonfly related to them. And I, they're one of the most primitive dragonflies too. So uh, yeah, this is, more like dragonflies were, I guess, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of years ago. So uh, that one, uh, and apparently they're pretty, they're not shy. They'll perch on you, apparently. I think Gary talked about how they sit on his head or on his shoulder. But uh, yeah, that was neat to see that one. And it's very good camouflage. You can see why they prefer to sit on the trees because they really blend in there, don't they? Great petal tail. All right. Now, this is another one I like. Uh, this is not a club. We're on, we're on a new type of dragonfly here. Petal tail, also not a club tail. So this is a new one. These are spike tails. This is the only spike tail I've seen in this area. And you can see it's called an arrowhead spike tail. Look at the arrowheads down here on its body. That's why it's called an arrowhead spike tail. It has arrowheads, a whole series of them here. Um, this one I found... Uh, at Willowsford in Loudoun County. I didn't know what it was. And then uh, I sent it to my friend, uh, Andy Rabin, who is a dragonfly expert in Loudoun County. And he got really excited because he says, I've never heard of one being in Loudoun County. That might be a first record. And I told him where it was. And then like the next day he went and found him himself. So uh, that was exciting because, um, Dragonflies and damselflies aren't as well uh, documented as birds are. So you can, and butterflies too. So you can find new stuff sometimes in a county at least. So, uh, so that was cool. And it's a very pretty dragonfly. These guys are going to be by creeks usually because they'll patrol up and down the creek. Um, and the dragonflies patrol, I talk about patrol means they fly back and forth. Often they're looking for mates when they're doing that. Also food, but more more mates, I think, usually. So they'll just keep going and going until they see someone they like. All right. Now here's another cool one. This one was at Riverbend, I believe. The Swift River Cruiser. You can see how it looks different than the others. It's got a very thin uh, abdomen there. And they're, I guess they're, they're fast. So uh, I haven't seen, oh, I did see some uh, this year uh, mating, actually, at Bless Park in uh, Ashburn. So a uh, Swift River Cruiser. Big green eyes. Look at those things. Looks like an alien almost. <laughs> All right. Here's another, this is another one from Merrimack Farm during the Bluebell Festival, the uh, common basket tail. So we're going to talk about, these are emeralds we're talking about now basket tail. So this is a springtime uh, specialist. After spring, you won't really see them. So uh, basically, they're all nymphs, I guess, after the spring. They'll lay their eggs and uh, they're just not in their adult phase the rest of this year. Okay, now this one is hard to photograph. This is the best photograph I've had. This, this is the prince basket tail, another emerald. These guys I've never seen one land. They just fly back and forth, back and forth along the shores of a, of a river or the bay. I think this one might have been Aquan Bay. I've seen them uh, lots. They're pretty common or, or at ponds, you'll see them too. But they're just always flying. So I had to catch them uh, in motion there. So <laughs> best I could do. But they're pretty common. You see them a lot. So if you see a darker dragonfly, uh, kind of medium size, flying back and forth, black and forth, back and forth. That's likely to be a prince basket tail. All right. 
All right, now here's a rare one. This is another emerald. We're in the emeralds here. This is one uh, I saw with Jim Wagner's group uh, a couple years ago. That is a fine lined emerald. I guess it's called that. It has these fine lines here. But uh, that's the only time I've ever seen this one. And that, that's a rare one. They get a few a year, I think, on the surveys. But So that was exciting. That was what we call a lifer, a life dragonfly. So it's hard for me to get life birds anymore, especially around here. But I can get life dragonflies. I got one this year. I'll show you in a bit. Okay, here's a Halloween pennant. Remember the, the title page? This one, you can really see the orange and black. really looks Halloween-y. And again, he's sitting up, perched on top, just like, a, just like a pennant. So this is another type of pennant. This is a banded pennant, doing the same thing. These, these uh, okay, now I'm in the skimmers, by the way. So uh, the Halloween pennant begins the skimmers, which are the most common and widespread uh, genus of dragonflies we have in our area. So most, most of the dragonflies you see are going to be some type of skimmer. Okay. So that's the banded pennant. This might be the only time I've seen one. These are kind of rare. So I was going to, so one thing I want to talk about is um, there's a lot of, in the skimmers especially, there's a lot of sexual dimorphism. They can look really different, the males and the females. And also the immatures, which I'll talk about. But you can see the one on the left is the male slaty skimmer. Slaty skimmers are medium sized. They're, they look, they're like dark blue, almost blackish. So you see a, uh, and they're very common. And then there's the female on the right, it looks way different, right? So an immature slaty is gonna look kind of similar to a, a female, by the way. So you go out uh, in the spring, early spring, all of them look like this one on the right. Either, either because the immature males have just come out and they look very similar to the females. There are some ways to tell them apart, but, but it's a, uh, but, but one, one, once the uh, immatures males uh, mature, then they'll look like uh, an adult on the right here, on the left. Okay. So this is when I'm talking about the, the dimorphism. This is a male calico pennant. Back to the pennants. And then here's a female calico pennant. You can see the difference. This one's all red. This one's uh, not as common as a Halloween pennant, but there's still plenty of these guys around. Again, look on the top of things. The female, this, I, I really like this photo. She's, she's really, uh, really pretty uh, bug there. So very different. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about, this is probably the most common uh, dragonfly you'll see, the common whitetail. There, uh, there's lots of them. Uh, sometimes I'll see 50, 60 of them in Occoquan Bay or lots of them in Huntley Meadows. But these are also common whitetails. The uh, one on the left is an immature male. The one on the right is the female. So they look very similar, but if you look at the wing pattern, see on the end here is clear because that's how he's going to be when he's an adult male. See here, see how the wingtip is clear here and then the immature male also clear. So his wings are kind of the same pattern. He's just not white. But if you look at the female, she has dark on the tips and she's uh, so that that's the female common white tail. So that's the way to tell an immature male and a female apart is just look at the wingtips. Okay. And uh, these, these are, like I said, they are common. They live up to their name. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Oh, the Eastern pond hawk. These are very, uh, another common one. The males, a full adult male is blue. Full, um, a female is green. But once again, the young, uh, the young males are green. Like they'll look like a female in a similar way, but a lot of them will start to have hints of blue on them as they grow older. So you'll see some that look kind of part blue, part green. Those are males that are getting their full blue color. But these, uh, these are very common. You'll see them perching. Uh, they'll, they'll perch low or they'll perch on the ground both ways. Whatever they feel like. Okay. What else we got? Oh, here's the blue dasher. 
Again, I'll show you, I'm showing you the two uh, male and female, very different. Although you can see the stripes here are similar. The male, see there on the, on the abdomen or the thorax, I mean, whatever that is. And then this part, very similar, but uh, this one's blue. And this is kind of their typical pose. They like to sit with their abdomen raised in the air and often their wings are folded forward like this, the female here, you can see how her wings are folded forward. That is a kind of a typical pose for them. And uh, they're really common. They might be the, eh, them and I think it's a close call between blue dashers and common white tails. Who's the most common, most abundant, I should say. So, but uh, they're, they're little, these are going to be a smaller dragonfly. So you see a little blue one fly, dragonfly flying around. That's probably a blue dasher. Okay. Here's the great blue skimmer. These are very common. They're probably the most common, pretty big one. A uh, good way to big and blue. And they have this white on the face. You can see that. And then once again, I want to show you the immature male. And uh, so uh, the females have brown eyes and the immatures, both males and females, have blue eyes. So if you see one with blue eyes, this could be either an immature male or an immature female. But this one's definitely a female has, because it looks like this and it's got the brown eyes. Whereas the male, adult male, looks like it's all blue, big blue thing. Okay. Let's see what else we have. Oh, Needham skimmer, another really common one. They're all over the place. Big, uh, medium, kind of medium sized orange one. And they're not going to usually perch on the ground. They're usually going to be on something, a stick like you see here. Uh, there is another one called a golden wing skimmer, but it's, it's so similar to a Needham's. I, it's very difficult to tell them apart. I was only confident that I saw them in Florida because they're pretty rare here. I, I'm not confident I've seen one in Virginia because so. they're so similar, hard to tell them apart. But uh, yeah, if you see orange dragonfly, it's almost certainly a Needham skimmer. Okay. This is one of my favorites. Very pretty, very beautiful. The 12 spotted skimmer. Got 12 spots if you count them. One, two, three, four. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. The black, I guess they're just counting the black spots. So, uh, yep. And they're, uh, they're around. They're not as abundant as some of the others, but you see them. Usually when I go out, I'll see a couple in the summer. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. So I'm going to stop showing you the females. I'm just going to show you the males for now since we got the idea. Uh, I don't think these are as dimorphic as some of the others anyway. Um, Here's another one, the blue corporal. These are an early uh, season. These are going to be a spring specialty. And they do usually perch on the ground like you see this one doing. And they're a thick, they got a thick body. Females are more brownish. Okay. And here's a really pretty one, the spangled skimmer. It's got spangles on his wings. All right. So that's a nice one. They're, they're blue, another medium-sized dragonfly. Uh, all right, this is the painted skimmer. Very intricate wing pattern. Guess why they're called painted? Because uh, it's a lot going on with those wings. Here's the widow skimmer, one of my favorite names. This is a male widow skimmer. Another pretty common one. Again, like I say, most of these skimmers are around. I don't know why they're called widow skimmer, but... It's a cool name. Now here's an interesting one. This is a swift set wing. This was a, the lifer I mentioned I had this year. I'd never seen one before. There's a colony at Jackson Abbott Preserve, uh, Mount Vernon. And uh, this is normally a, a uh, Southern species. Their range only goes to about North Carolina. But uh, there's some people think maybe uh, a pregnant female got blown up North by a storm or something and established a colony at Jackson Abbott because there are so, a lot of them there. I saw four or five myself and other people have seen a dozen or so. So uh, yeah, so if you wanna see one of these, go to Jackson Abbott next, uh, next summer, I guess. They're probably done now, might still be there. So, and here's another cool one. 
The little orange ones that you see, the really little dragonflies are eastern amber wings. You usually see them in the water or one perched on a rock. That's a really common one. And sometimes you'll see them in the grass too. This is a wandering glider. These almost never land. I got really lucky. It was a cool fall day and this guy was perched trying to warm up. Usually these are the ones if you're at the giant parking lot, you see it flying around, uh, flying all around those orange dragonflies. You've probably seen them maybe if you're paying attention, maybe. Uh, and they, they are uh, wandering. They will wander hundreds of miles from where they're born and they will lay their eggs in puddles or anywhere. They're very opportunistic. And I guess it works for them because there's a lot of these around. But they found them out in the middle of the ocean, just, just flying around. And uh, it's, it's weird. But it seems like they, they, they sometimes will go toward cars. I think maybe they think certain cars are water based on the color. I don't know. But uh, you see those a lot. And here's another rare one. This is the only time I've ever seen it. This is at Occoquan Bay, the bar wing skimmer. You can see the bars here on the wing. It's, 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 it's in that little pond next to the uh, parking lot. So actually not the one where Easy Road is. Not, not the, not the uh, bigger one, but this, a real, the really small pond there. Anyway, if you want to look for it next year. All right, and then here's one that we can see now, the Autumn Meadowhawk. The red ones, so if you're out, you see these bright red dragonflies. They're going to be smaller than in Needham's. Uh, that's an Autumn Meadowhawk. And well named because you see them in the autumn. And here's another meadowhawk. This is the blue faced meadowhawk. This one's a little smaller. This is a pretty small one. It's got the blue face, bright red body. Not the best picture, but that's okay. And there's the Carolina saddlebags. This is one of the ones that migrates along with this guy, the black saddlebags. And they're called saddlebags because they have this. Uh, color here right next to their body, which looks sort of like saddlebags, especially when they're flying. This one, you can see it a little better. Uh, some people, I've heard that it maybe helps them warm up faster, that extra color there, because it absorbs the heat. So it helps their wings. All right. All right. Let's talk about damselflies. Not as many damselflies. There are not as many species of them. So they're smaller. They have wings that lay straight back, like you can see on the variable dancer here. Variable dancers are purple. So if you see a little purple dragonfly, it's gonna be a variable dancer. This is one I took this year with the new camera. So uh, you can see uh, dragonflies have uh, wings like little airplanes. They look like an airplane. Whereas uh, damselflies have them straight back along their back like that. And they're generally smaller. And you can, yeah, sometimes it's easy to overlook them. So you got to really kind of scan, have an eye for them sometimes. All right, here's one. This is a blue fronted dancer. A lot of these look the same too. So uh, I, I up my drag, my damselfly game a bit this summer. I can identify more of them on site than I could. But uh, yeah, they're very similar. I'll show you some resources at the end. So blue fronted dancer. This one has a very fine, uh, fine line here in the blue. Whereas the others, like this guy, the blue tip dancer has these big stripes. So a blue tip dancer. Here's a powdered dancer. These are uh, white. They look white like this guy, see? Even on the uh, tip of the abdomen, kind of white looking. And they have the stripes here. Here's a blue ringed dancer. This might be the only time I've seen this one. Very pretty. This I think was in Loudoun County. Blue ringed dancer. These are the dancers. This is one genus of, a, of a damselflies, the dancers. Okay. All right, and now here's one of the more common ones you'll see. Uh, anytime you're near a creek or other body of water, especially creeks, you'll, you might see an ebony jewel wing. And they're, uh, Easiest damselfly to identify, they have big black wings. And they're pretty good size too. These, these are, these, you'll notice them. So uh, they look green. It seems like depending on 
how you're looking at them. Sometimes they look green. Sometimes they look blue. But uh, this one, uh, this one, I was able to get the texture of the wings, which I thought was good. All right, now here's some big bluets. They mate just like the dragonflies because they're closely related. You can see how the big bluet has her by the neck. And uh, these are very common. Uh, Aquan Bay, they're just uh, loaded with these big bluets. So I, I, this one, you can see the female and the male. Female, obviously, is the one that's not blue. We have stream bluets. Again, I used one where you could see both both sexes. The brown one is the female. So he's got her by the neck again. Same way. I don't know if she's happy about it or not. <laughs> I don't know. Here's a double stripe blue it. You can see the double stripes here. Well named. Blue it's are another genus of damselfly. Here's a skimming blue it. This one has the big black stripes. And I really, really um, you need a field guide to figure some of these out. But I think I got them right. I hope I did. <laughs> Here's a familiar bluet. This is one of the most common bluets you'll see. They're often in grass all the time. Uh, you can you often see a lot of them. My internet connection's unstable. Anyway, that's okay. Can you guys still see? Okay. Uh, these are slender bluets, male and female. Very long, dark abdomen there. Very long, they're like a stretch damselfly. <laughs> Slender bluets. Here's a fragile fork tail. This is the most common damselfly, I think. See them a lot. Um, good way to tell them, if you can see it or you get a photo, is this little uh, space here. There's like a, on, on, on this pattern here on the back, see how it's separated there. There's a little, little mark there and they're, in this area is pretty unmarked too, so that's another way to tell. Fork tails are another genus. Here's a Rambers fork tail. We have these around here, but they're pretty uncommon. I think I took this photo at Chincoteague. All right, here's the Eastern fork tail, another really little one, easy to miss. This one was hard to get a good photo of, but they're, uh, see they have, they have the more uh, thicker stripes. They don't have the, the break like the uh, fragile fork tail does. Eastern fork tail. Now here's one. This was a lifer damselfly for me this summer at Metal Art Gardens. So I'd never seen this one before. This is a female, uh, and they only live on lily pads. That's why they're called a lily pad foretail. Makes sense. But I didn't know what it was, and then I figured it out with some help on the internet. And uh, that that's a pretty rare. It's pretty uncommon. Uh, uncommon damselfly. So I was glad to see it. And American Ruby Spot. This one, I haven't seen one this year, but they're around. It's a red damselfly, which is cool. And then we have, and then of course, I told you that the damselflies have uh, the wings on their, folded along their backs. Well, this is the exception. This is a spread wing. Still a damselfly, but the wings are more splayed out. So, uh, but still not straight out like a dragonfly. But this is a damselfly, even though it sort of looks like a dragonfly. So uh, those are around. I haven't seen one in a while, but I thought that was really cool. Anyway, that's uh, here's some resources. Um, Bob Blakeney's book. This is really good. You can order this on Amazon or uh, other places, Northern Virginia Dragonflies and Damselflies. And that obviously that's keys on the ones in our area, right? And here's my favorite damselfly book. Uh, if you can still get it, this is Ed Lamb's. This is what I always go to and I'm trying to identify a damselfly because he shows you all the patterns, the head patterns, the abdomen, everything, and all the different ages too. So it's, it's really good. And to, but Northeast, most, those are here too. So uh, the da, most of the damselflies that we have are going to be in that book. So, all right. Well, that's all I got. Thank you very much. See if anybody has. Hey, okay, thank you. Do you want to take it off the screen share? I will. I just did. And we can go back if we want. Does anybody have comments, questions, great stories? Oh, it's my share? time. About right. Yeah. Amy does. Oh, yeah. and I should say that because there's a, a bunch of people here, if you raise your hand, which is down 
in your participant. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's to the right on the bottom. Thanks, and Russ. Then, all right. I just wanted to know, they just grab whatever they want to eat and start eating. And what happens? Can they grab things that sting um, and eat them too? I don't I was just wondering. Uh, they can try. <laughs> um, I guess they hope they kill it before it can sting them. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that could happen. Oh, there are stuff they'd eat dragonflies too, like uh, Mississippi kites and uh, other things, fowl kestrels and things. Birds will eat them. But yeah, that's a good question. If they grabbed a European hornet or something, uh, that might be bad. <laughs> might be the last mistake they ever made. <laughs> Well, if you keep your eyes peeled, it's really cool to see a dragonfly that's just re emerged. Yeah, yeah, that's I mentioned the wing. tenoral, the tenoral with the wet wing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No good stories from anybody. Patricia here? has a question. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't quite get the name of the uh, the first book that you you mentioned. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me see. I, got I can Italy show you. Dragonfly. Yeah, yeah. hang on. Oh. oh, that's not it. Hang on. Just Is it? What's happening there? Oh, wait, let me go back. That's not it. Um, anyway, it's, uh, let me try that again. That one. Okay, let's try that. Okay, there we go. Let me click down. Can you see? Let me see. Okay, so Bob Blakeney's there we go. All right, can you see that? Field guide, yeah. Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia dragonflies and damselflies. Bob Blakeney, Robert Blakeney. Blakeney, Robert Blakeney. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. He's got one for butterflies too, by the way. Uh, yeah, and Judy Gallagher was a co-host of that, and she's with us tonight. Do you want to say a couple words, Judy? Oh yeah. Did I get anything wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, although I um, was looking at that um, russet tip club tail. I've never seen one with an abdomen that color. But mm. you, you've got some amazing shots there. That's really good. Thanks. And that's all I have to say. It is a russet tip club tail, right? <laughs> I, I think what... so, but I just have never seen one with that color abdomen. Oh, well, maybe I'll double check that one. Then. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> I don't know what else it would be. <laughs> Well, that's true, but it's sure fun to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I'll double check it, make sure. Because <laughs> that was one I got years ago before I was quite as knowledgeable. <laughs> I could have blown that um, I saw some at Lee Slovenia just yesterday, so you might want to go there to the playground. Um, they're still there. Okay, nice. Nice. So yeah, I want to yeah, find another shadow darner this fall. <laughs> Yeah, so what um, dragonflies are we likely to see as the weather gets cooler? Um, the meadowhawks are still around. Judy can help with that. Uh, you might see a shadow darner, but the meadowhawks are going to be, and you might start seeing the, the migrating too, the, the, uh, the darners, the green darners, and the uh, saddlebags you might see flying overhead, heading south. So, uh, huh, yeah. and they're pretty big. Yeah, yeah. But look for the meadowhawks, the autumn meadowhawks. And I think some of the others are, might still be around. You might get a late brood. I don't know. So I'm still seeing wandering gliders. Yeah, they're still around, sure. They seem to be ubiquitous always. <laughs> huh. You saw a blue-faced meadowhawk, Brian? Yeah, the meadowhawks are still around. Actually, I think the blue-faced are another fall specialty, right? I think that's right. Yeah. Yep. This is a surprising number, given that the weather gets pretty nippy. Yeah. So I think, uh, but that was uh, that. That's that's pretty much all the ones I've seen in other Virginia. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, once we get a hard frost, that'll kill them all, a lot of them off. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a good website. Yeah. Yeah, there's several that are pretty good. Dragonflies in Northern Virginia. Who is that? Is that 
Is that Kevin's, Brian? That used to be at Huntley Meadows. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It Kevin. Is. Yeah. Yeah, that is a good one. Yeah, I think he's gone, but his website remains. His website lives on. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and he's not gone, gone. He's just not here. <laughs> right. No, he's in California, I think. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, it's only dragonflies. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I, I threw in some damsels, too, just to. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, he's more of a specialist uh, than me in dragonflies. Uh, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Well, and Brian brought up that he has a flight time calendar, which I always really think is very helpful. Yeah, right. So, yeah, he told me he also has not, could never actually confirm a golden wing skimmer either. <laughs> so, huh. You're welcome, everyone. <laughs> um, Ashley wants to know, um, they mostly eat mosquitoes and gnats and whatever they can catch. <laughs> Julie's asking. Uh, yeah, just whatever. But 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 I've noticed um, when we hike at uh, Aquan Bay, if there's a lot of dragonflies, there's no mosquitoes or gnats. <laughs> They've all been eaten by the dragonflies. The dragonflies are like our air cover. Right? That's a total win-win. It is. It is. So we get to see dragonflies and we're not bo bothered. That's right. <laughs> Anything to bite us. Um, you're asking... Uh, I'm just interested in everything. My main thing is birds, but I'm also a butterfly guy and I just like things that fly. So I also got interested in dragonflies. Um, I also like uh, reptiles and whatever. Uh, mostly not plants quite so much. That's uh, Nancy's thing. <laughs> but uh, maybe I'll get into that too. But right now I'm more uh, flying stuff. If it flies, I can usually tell you what it is. But I've been learning uh, some beetles and things too. Robber flies. I've photographed some interesting robber flies lately. So, uh, yeah. Which have very, very cool faces. Yeah. Robber flies are the falcons of the insect world. Like dragon. They're like dragonflies, only they're, they're a little different. They're actually, dragonflies aren't actually related to flies. They're, yeah, robber flies can eat dragonflies. All right. Yeah, robber flies are the baddest bug there is probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh then maybe a hornet or something yeah. mm -hmm. all right nancy thanks um like i said i'm going to be redoing the uh, four corners in november so for those who were shut out <laughs> oh yeah that yeah yeah very fun yeah it'll be fine it's been a long enough yeah so i'll be good and oh, well, we're gonna have we're gonna have a thing on uh deer and birds in uh november November meeting. Deer and birds. Yeah, the 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 uh, Arlington uh, Master Naturalist are going to be okay. uh, representing that. Yep. They have a deer program. They do. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. Like I say, what does it always say? If you had half as much fun as I did, I had twice as much as you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how clever. <laughs> for real just thank math. you for coming everyone thanks brian thank you it was good thank you hope you enjoyed it the pretty you didn't who knew there were so many pretty dragonflies in our area right it was very <laughs> good thank you kim and thanks, thanks for coming thanks yes thanks for having us i hope we can do it again great oh, yeah, we gotta come to the four that. corners come to all the other stuff yeah four corners is basically my trips to Maine, Washington State, San Diego, and South Florida. So it's not just birds, it's butterflies, it's other stuff too. Also, whatever things I saw there. So, uh, so you can get an idea of how the different climate, how different. Yeah. Climate, how yeah. Like the different yeah. I saw whales, I saw, you know, puffins, I saw cool seabirds and, you know, lizards, whatever, all sorts of stuff. Oh yeah, there's so much cool stuff out there. Yeah. And then you come home and you got all your pictures and you spend the next like month. I yeah, guess, Diane, one. I think we did record this, yes? Yes, we did. So it'll be up on our YouTube channel. Yeah, Diane was asking.